right, so we're talking about centripetal acceleration. What I want you guys to do, take the idea that you have about acceleration and toss it out the window because I'm going to give you a new idea about acceleration. Up to this point in physics, acceleration has been objects going faster, 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 like a, you know, you're at a stoplight, the light turns green, your car accelerates when you push on the gas pedal. Or you're driving along and you're moving and the light turns red, you put your foot on the brake and you go slower, 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 stop. That'd be an acceleration. But is that the only way to accelerate? No. So right here, I have a turntable with a mass on it. You guys remember turn, you, don't, you never really had turntables. I grew up listening to music. I put the record on the turntable and put the needle on, right? Have you guys even seen turntables before? Is this like a new concept here? So I, pu I, push, I, this, I push this button, the turntable starts to rotate, and I have a mass that I placed on the turntable. Can everybody see this mass? Now, is this mass rotating around on the turntable, is it going faster, faster, faster? No. no. Is the mass going slower, slower, slower? No. no. It is going around in a, in a circle at a nice, steady speed. Right? But is this mass accelerating? Yes, it is. This is the acceleration that we're going to be looking at this week. It's called a centripetal acceleration. Now, how the heck can that thing be accelerating if it's not going faster, 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 or slower, slower, slower? Well, let me explain. I want to remind you the basic definition for acceleration. You use like one of the very first equations that you learned in physics, the basic definition for acceleration is change in velocity over time. And remember that velocity is a vector, meaning it has two things. A vector quantity always has magnitude and direction, right? Now what most people think of when they think of acceleration, they think of the velocity changing due to a change of magnitude. If the magnitude of the velocity changes, that's your faster, 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 slower, slower, slower. What we're gonna look at in this chapter, it's not gonna be a change of magnitude. We're gonna look at change of direction. So when an object's in a circular path, I'm gonna turn, turn this turntable back on. Would you agree that as this object on the turntable goes around in a circle, is the direction constantly changing? Yeah, so look, like when the turntable's right here, as the mass passes this point right here, which way is the velocity directed? Straight towards you. How about when the turntable's right here? Which way is the velocity directed? That way. How about when the turntable's right here? towards the screen, and then over here. So it's, it's constantly changing direction. Direction is part of velocity because velocity is a vector. So if your direction is changing, your velocity is changing. Does that make sense? Now, which way is the velocity changing towards? I want to talk about that. Actually, real quick, before we do the ne this next part, look, uh, there's an important term. It's referred to as tangential velocity. So here I'm gonna make a circle. So let's say like we're looking at the turntable. There's the turntable and it's, it's rotating this way. So we'll say the motion is like that. It's spinning around clockwise. And let's say the mass is right on the edge of the turntable right there. Which way is the velocity of that mass on the turntable at that specific time? The velocity is going to be this way. And we call that a tangential velocity because the velocity is tangent to the circular path. Does that make sense? How about when the object is at this location right here? Which way is the velocity at that point? It would be this way. Tangent to the circular path. So think of it like this. If this mass were to suddenly leave the turntable, you know, so it turns on. Oh, it, it just, whoa. I didn't even expect that. 
it actually just it's, it slid off the turntable. So you have the, it's going around in a circle, around in a circle. If the object leaves the turntable, how is it going to leave the circular path that it was in? What's the key word? Tangent to the circular path. Same thing if I take this rubber stopper on this string right here. I'm going to swing this around. Don't worry, it's not going to come off. Okay? I'm swinging this around. I'm swinging this around like this. Now let's say the knot on the ends of the string, so right now I'm swinging a rubber stopper around my head. Okay? If the string at the end holding the rubber stopper came loose, how would the rubber stopper leave the circular path? What's the key word? Tangent to the circular path. We call it, we call it a tangential velocity. Okay, now, let's go back to this screen. All right, so which way, when an, when an object is in a circular path, which way is the direction of the change in velocity? Because an acceleration, ultimately, what is an acceleration? It's a change in velocity. Which way is the change in velocity for an object that's in a circular path? The answer is, I put it right here. The change in velocity and therefore the acceleration is always directed to the center of the circular path. In fact, in your notes right now, write down somewhere, I want you to know what the word centripetal means. Write this down. Centripetal means center seeking. The word centripetal means center seeking. Because why? Because which way is centripetal acceleration always directed? To the center of the circle, which I'm going to show you with this little um, vector problem. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this. So change in velocity is velocity final minus velocity initial. This is going to take about two minutes. Just follow me through here. Velocity final minus velocity initial, it's the same thing as V final plus negative V initial. So here, here we have a circular path. Everybody see this circular path right here? We have two points on the circular path. We got point A and point B. So which way is the velocity of the object at point A? Notice that the velocity at point A is what? It's tangent to that circle. Everybody see it? Okay. A split second later, the object is at point B. Notice at point B, the velocity is tangent to the circle. So let's do a little vector exercise. What we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to go V final plus negative V initial. Now, if this is V initial, what would negative V initial be? Negative V initial would be the same thing, but the other way. That's negative V initial right there. So we're going to take V final and add it to negative V initial. So that's what, that's what we're doing right over here. So notice, so here we got V final. So see, here's V final right there. I just rewrote it right here. It's the same exact thing. We got V final tip to tail with negative V initial. Does everybody see what I did? So I'm doing this. I'm doing V final minus V initial because what am I trying to find? I'm trying to find the change in velocity, right? So we have V final, negative V initial, tip to tail. The resultant vector of this addition is going to be from the tail of the first to the tip of the last. That's the change in velocity. Notice which way it points. I'm going to pick it up so you really see it. So I'm going to grab this, move it over here. Which way does that point? The change in velocity points which way? To the center of the circle. Now, if you understand what I just did, that's awesome. If you don't understand what I just did, maybe you could rewatch this video at home and get it. But look, at the end of the day, what's, what do you have to know? At the end of the day, you gotta know centripetal acceleration is directed to the center of the circle, okay? Um, there's an equation for centripetal acceleration, which I'm not going to derive. I don't think it's time well spent. If you want the derivation of this, like where it comes from, anybody want to see the derivation for it? There's a cool YouTube video on it. Uh, is, you could read the textbook. <laughs> centripetal acceleration 
is v squared over r, where that's, that t right there is tangential. You take the tangential velocity of the object, and then what's r? Radius. The radius of the circular path, okay? Centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. Okay, now, next idea. Guys, what does F net equal? Net force equals MA. Now, if you have an object that's traveling in a circular path, the net force, <coughs> this net force is going to be centripetal force. If an object's traveling in a circular path, the net force is going to equal the centripetal force. The centripetal force is not a new force on our list of forces. So do you guys remember the forces we did back in chapter four, like two months ago, three months ago? The four key forces that we looked at, we looked at tension, we looked at friction, we looked at normal force, and we looked at gravity. Those are the forces we worked with. Is centripetal force a new force on those list of forces, on that list? Uh-uh. The way it goes is like this. These forces here can all contribute to the centripetal force. Sometimes it's going to be one of them is the centripetal force. Other times it's going to be two of them. Like you're going to have situations where it's like um, normal force and gravity added together make up the centripetal force. Okay, so it's like this, F still equals MA, right? F equals MA, and then what did we just say centripetal acceleration was? Centripetal acceleration equals V squared over R. So dude, to make this ultra clear, the way you're gonna approach these problems, step number one, what are you gonna do? Free body, body diagram. diagram. That's how you do force problems. Step one, you're going to draw a free body diagram. Step two, you're going to sum the forces. What's the sum of the forces equal to? MA, because sum of the forces, it's another name for net force. Okay, So you're going to sum the forces. Sum of the forces is going to equal MA. We have a new A, which is centripetal. It's equal to V squared over R. So that's step two. And then step three, you solve the algebra. So it's going to be very familiar. Very familiar. It's the same thing, but with a new acceleration. Okay? So let's just look at some examples of centripetal force. Um, so, right here. So, we got a guy swinging an object around on a string, just like I was a second ago. What is the centripetal force in this situation? What's the force that keeps the object? So, here I'm going to swing this rope around, even though it makes you nervous. Okay, I'm swinging this around like this. What force is keeping the rubber washer in the circular path? Tension. Tension. If I stuck up a razor blade and cut the rope, would the rubber stopper stay in the circular path? No. no. So tension provides the centripetal force. Okay, let's, let, let's come over here. So here we're looking at a car going around a turn. It's just going in a circle. Same thing as the mass on the turntable, right? I turn the turntable on. You know, the mass is going around. It's a very similar situation to this. What keeps the mass in the circle? Friction. Friction. Same thing with the car here going around in circle. So there's got to be, there's got to be a frictional force pointing to the center. Because just think, what if this car hit a patch of ice? Would the car stay in the circle? No, because the friction got greatly reduced and the car would, how would the car leave the circle? If this suddenly is going around and it hits a patch of ice, how would the car leave the circle if it, if it didn't have enough friction? Tangent to the circular path, like that, okay? Now, last one I wanna look at, let's look at this cart that's, in the, that's going through a loop-de-loop, -loop, right? So that would be like this. So I got my little loop-de-loop -loop demonstrator right here. So the ball goes down like that. Now, so what we're doing is we're looking at the ball, or in this case, the cart, when it's at the very top of the loop, okay? 
what are the forces that are acting on the car when it's at the top of the loop here? Well, obviously, we have gravity, mg. But what other force do we have? What other force would be acting on this cart? Centripetal force. Well, yeah, but centripetal force, it's not, it's not a force on our list of forces. All of these forces here, gravity. Gravity. Well, force. we already got it's normal, norm, force. normal force, right? Because if you think about it, this track up here, look, this track is a surface, right? Which way is the force of the surface if the cart is underneath the track? The force of the surface has to be which way? Down. Down. So guys, in this situation, in this situation, these two forces added together would make up the centripetal force. Is Yo. there friction? Uh, oh, well, yeah, but friction would be back like this. If there was friction, friction would be opposite motion like that. That would not, that doesn't have any component pointing towards the center. Okay? All right, now, final thought here. Has anybody heard of centrifugal force? Centrifugal. Not centripetal, but there's this other force called the centrifugal force. Nobody's heard of it? I've had kids over in previous years who are like, when I, when I say, guys, we're going to do centripetal force, and they're like, Spaldo, don't you mean centrifugal force? Okay. The, ce the centrifugal force is a fake force pointing away from the center. So it's interesting. Look it up on Wikipedia. Okay? <laughs> There's this force. You should just be aware of it. If anybody ever says the centrifugal force. So here's what the centrifugal force is. Well, for, first off, make no mistake. Is there such a thing as the centrifugal force? No. There is no such thing as the centrifugal force. But here's what it is. You've all done the game Jello in the backseat of a car. No. You're driving down a road and you hit a turn. You hit a turn. And uh, you're in the back seat, and it's like this. Jello, right? <laughs> Have you guys yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do jello right now. Ready? <laughs> this is to explain the centrifugal force. Everybody, hands up. You're driving a car. I want everybody to do this. Ready? Um, and we're all in our own cars. Okay, ready? So we're driving, driving straight. Hands up. We're driving straight. We're going 50 miles an hour, right? We're going. 50 miles an hour. No, no, hands on the steering wheel. Not, not like on a roller coaster. No, not like this. You're driving your car, okay? Motorcycle? Uh, no, you're in a car. Like this. Now, now, listen. So we're going 50 miles an hour, and we hit a curve in the road, and we're going to turn left. Ready? Turn left. Which way is your body going to go? To the right. Everybody got me? You, you turn your car to the left. You turn your car to the left. Your body is going to go to the right. People call that the centrifugal force. It's a force away from the center of the circle. There's no such force. It's a fictitious force. So my question to you, if, what, what, if it's not a force, what is causing you to move away from the center of the circle. Momentum. You're, you're feeling the, the, the pull of the, into the center of the circle, uh -huh. and then you're trying to keep your eyes straight, so you're what? moving against the forces. No, it's, it's nothing you actively do. It just automatically, it's not like you subconsciously do anything. You could be asleep, and it would still happen to you. Yeah. You know, you're in the back seat of a car, and the car turns left, your body is going to go to the right. Momentum. So what is it that causes you to go to the right when the car moves to the left? Wait, wouldn't it be momentum? Because well, you're if, close. If you're it's not going, momentum. Because if you're going oh, I right, said that it makes a while a sudden ago. turn. Like your momentum is still going that way. It starts with the letter I. Inertia. Impulse. Inertia. Well, I impulse <laughs> is change of momentum. Oh. The <laughs> word inertia. Now let me write it. So the, the, in reality, in reality, this centrifugal force, which is a fictitious force that doesn't exist, in reality, all it is is inertia. And remember, inertia is the ability of an object to be like, mm-mm, I'm not doing that. No, no. Right? That's what inertia is. What's the one measure of inertia? Mass. Mass. Mass is the one measure of inertia. 
Now look, if you're driving in a straight line, back to what we just did, you're driving in a straight line, what does your body want to do? Keep going in a straight line. If you're going in a straight line, your body wants to go in a straight line. So when you turn the wheel of the car to the left, your body's like, I don't want to do that. I want to keep doing what I was doing, right? Which is why you lean to the right. But make no mistake, is there a force pushing you to the right? No. All it is is inertia. All it is is inertia, okay? Now, one other little situation, just to make centripetal force more clear. Now, instead of being in a car, we're going to be riding on a stagecoach, okay? Ooh. With a wooden bench, okay? Wooden bench. And it's in the early morning after it just snowed, so the seat is icy, and Spaldo rode on this stagecoach right before you, and one of my favorite things in the whole world is melted butter. What makes things better? Melted butter. Butter. What makes things better? Melted butter. Okay? So the stagecoach pulls up, it's got an icy seat covered in melted butter, and you sit on it and you're like, ooh. That's cold, but yet nice, right? Because <laughs> it's, it's got butter, okay? Unless, what makes things better? Butter. 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 Okay, so now you're, you're on this stagecoach, ready? Okay, now, you're, gonna, you're driving horses now. Say, giddy up. giddy up. Giddy up. Okay, so now we're going on the stagecoach, right? <laughs> Same thing. The horses are going fast. The horses start to turn to the left. And you're sitting on a frozen bench covered in melted butter. What's going to happen when the stagecoach turns to the left? You're going to slide right off. Now, again, was there a force that pushed you off the stagecoach? Uh-uh. In fact, what it was is it was lack of a force. If you slide off of a stagecoach that's turning left, what was the reason you slid off of it? There wasn't enough centripetal force. Now what would be what's the centripetal force that keeps you <coughs> what's the centripetal force that keeps you from sliding off the stagecoach? Friction. If there's not enough friction, you are going to slide right off the stagecoach. Does that make sense? Or just make it a merry-go-round. I want you to imagine you're at Six Flags when we go to Six Flags next semester and you hop on the merry-go-round thinking it's going to be like a nice baby ride and pretend the on this particular day that the merry-go-round goes ballistic, okay? Just goes crazy, like something breaks inside of it, and the merry-go-round starts to go faster, faster. And you're like, oh my God, what's happening, right? So like, you slide off your pony, but then you're now you're holding on to one of the rails, right? And your feet, you're like, your whole body is parallel to the ground, because the merry-go-round is going so fast, right? So you're hanging on to it, right? Now, is there gonna be a limit to how fast that merry-go-round can go? Yeah, dude, there's going to be a limit, because no if, you're, if you're holding on to that pole, then your muscles are providing the centripetal force to keep you in the circle, but is there a limit to how much you could hold on to? So imagine it just starts going like, you're just like, vert, you're like horizontal, right? You're hanging off of it. There's going to be a limit where, you know, you're not going to be able to provide the centripetal force to keep you in the circle, right? All right. Oh, and then final, final, final. I promise this is the end. Look, this is a cool, this is a cool equation right here. Look, centripetal force equals m v squared over r. So I want to give you two scenarios. You go around a turn. The first turn, you go five miles an hour. The second time you go around the turn, and it's the same turn, right? Same exact turn. The second time you go around it, you're going ten miles an hour. How much more force will you need to keep in the circle when you're going 10 miles an hour compared to five miles an hour? So the question is this, if you double the velocity, if you double the velocity of an object in a circular path, how much more centripetal force will you need? Four times, because uh, velocity is squared. Okay? Alright, we're done.